Me? Why me? I was frozen to the spot. I gazed up at the mocking face of Guang Cheng's ghost, the empty eye sockets, the crushed nose, the face partially covered with a smear of rotten skin. The sword swished ceaselessly in his hands. He wants to fight you, Seth, and only you, Zhong Bao told me. You cannot refuse. It will be the deadliest combat, the sky and the water duel. Zhong Bao unsheathed two swords from his saddle. These are the best blades the master sword maker has ever crafted. Take them. I slipped down from Ansel's house and my hands closed around the hilts of two swords. Remember all that I have taught you, Zhong Bao whispered. Let the singing swords serve you well. I hefted the swords. I twisted my wrists until I felt the swords were correctly balanced in my grasp. I knew what I had to do. I stood still, letting all tension, all thoughts, all fear drain from my body. I had to empty myself of, a, of all human feelings so my opponent would not read my mind and my second guess, my next move. From that moment on, I could no longer be self Chan. I had to become part of the swords. When my mind had descended into that secret palace, I was ready. In a single bound, I leaped into the air and the swinging swords carried me high into over the water. Gronson's ghost leaped after me, lunging swiftly, the swishing blades slicing through the air. Somewhere be- below, I heard Wei Han's cry of fear. But in that instant, I locked out all sound, all sights. Only the ghost and I would now determine which one of us lived and which died. A shrill scream rose on my throat and I leapt backwards and rose several meters high into the sky. I spun my body around and round faster and faster and then lashed out my swords. I sliced a ribbon of cloud from my ghost robe. Now the ghost had gained the advantage. Wrongly, I had made the first move. I had revealed one of my secrets. The ghost arched backwards in the air, his body flipping cartwheels, daring me to follow and enter a zone of death. I waited, my body held suspended as though by some invincible platforms in space, my singing swords twirling. I knew I was the spinning motion of the swords that let me defy gravity. That and the ancient warriors believed that one had the ability to stand on air. Without warning, the ghost dived forward, driving the swishing spinning points of deadly metal straight towards my heart. I jumped aside and flipped myself over and over, higher and higher, letting the vicious blades pass beneath me. I spun myself like a top and hurled myself down in pursuit. The ghost and I were dancing in thin air like two deadly whirlwinds. Our swords slashing, lashing and slashing, our bodies bending and buckling. Whenever our swords clanked together, the rasp of metal rolled above the, the lake like thunder. With mighty leaps, we crossed the lake from side to side, spinning our bodies, contorting our legs and arms chasing each other in circles. Spinning and swirling, spots flying whenever metal clashed against metal. I smelled smoke, so intense that had the spots been a bushfire that started somewhere below the lake's edge, and then it happened. Wrong Chun's toes played his deadliest hand, the ghost of the cunning old wallow must have known why I had come in search of him. With the two swords now swishing in one hand, he reached his other hand beneath his robes and produced the seven red buckets. The moment I saw the red buckets, I lost my concentration. All my mystic kung fu powers deserted me. The air seemed to open beneath me and I plunged straight down. I had become a dead man in a dead fall, dropping like a stone. 
the water suddenly rushing up to meet me. Guang Zheng's toes dive after me, his stately sword probing around me. At any moment, I knew he would slice me two ribbons. I desperately worked my singing sword, but suddenly they flew from my hands. I looked round in surprise. There was a gigantic rush of air as Ansel Ang's horse slipped between the doors and I. Ansel snatched the seven red buttons as his horse hoofs struck the doors, a deadly blow in the chest. The doors disintegrated into a hundred pieces before my eyes. The last thing I saw as the water closed over my head was Ansel waving the red buttons triumphantly. And then, nothing. I awoke on the edge of the lake. I was alive, shivering and spluttering, as Sway Han pounded my chest. I think I must have swallowed half the lake because I was still coughing up water, like you wouldn't believe. You were superb, she whispered. I have never see, seen such swap play. I looked at her and shrugged one of my casual shrugs, like, Hey, I'm a hero. Keep talking, though. And then more water dashed from my mouth and down the f- front of my t-shirt. Yup, how embarrassing. That was when Zhong Bao told me how Mandino and Zheng Da had dived in and fished me out. I had never seen such swimming, he dreamed. I thought you had drowned, but your friends found you just in time. At last, when I... Strutted to my feet, Zhong Bao guided us together. He ripped open the seven red buttons and held them high above our heads. This will be our farewell, he announced. I will f- never forget what you have done for China. And we will never forget you and Gui Ying, Wei Han told him. And with that, Zhong Bao sprinkled the silver crystals over our heads.